legend. Wait for it, Daryl. Hey guys, it's me, legend. Wait for it, Daryl. Did you know that I love Yu-Gi-Oh? I'm not fronting, okay? I have the cards. I have decks. I have so many decks, okay? I've been collecting the manga since I was in middle school through high school to this day, all right, okay? I have almost all the values. But today, I got something in the mail, something special, something rare, something most fans either didn't know existed or either completely forgot about. I got today the original fight disc, dual disc. This was what was inspired from the manga, not from the original animated series. And this gave me an idea. What if not only did I show off my amazing dual disc collection, but I also reviewed them all for you to see? Not just this one, but one from every single series that had an official release from both Japan and America. So today, Let's start my dual disc collection review. So let's begin with the newest edition of my collection, the Fight Disc. If you don't know why it's called the Fight Disc, it's because this is, was an Asian exclusive um, release. And in the manga and in the Japanese anime, it was referred to as a Fight Disc, not a dual disc. And yeah, this is my first time ever seeing one of these real. You guys are gonna see it for the first time with me as well. Um, this is purely mechanical. There's no batteries or anything inside of it. Let's open it. So, as you can see here, this is entirely mechanical. There's not a lot of stickers to it. Um, also, I got in the second hand, so bear with me. Um, there is no deck slot for this. If you wanted to put your cards in, you just take your deck like so, put it in, well bam. That's how your deck rolled. The graveyard zone is still placed over here. Uh, there is an ejector slot for it, so you can just pull it in, pull it out. That's not the most interesting feature about this, however. No, the most interesting feature about this is how they do the spell in the trap card zone, okay? If you wanted to, you just put your monster cards right here and your spell and trap cards right here, so it's a whole forced play mat. This dual disc is also surprisingly light. I think it's something to do with the plastic because my arm doesn't wear out or get tired. Uh, my only real complaint with this dual disc are the straps right here because you have to basically take an armband and just strap it tight to your hand. Um, and it was really hard to do first point. Um, so yeah, no batteries required. The plastic again does feel a little flimsy. I have no idea how I'm going to close this. Oh, there we go. Um, and it doesn't do the chuk chuk feature that other dual this has. Yeah, it basically comes as this. As I said before, this was the very first Asian release of a roleplay-like item for a dual disc. Um, the fight disc is a pretty good, you know, try. It has the extra slot zone, which I like. That perfect close. Here's the fight disc by itself. As you can see, there's no coloring on the stickers at all. Um, the back is pretty plain and basic, nothing really to show there. This is where you put the wrist guard. Um, I place the wrist guard inside here. Yeah, it's really simple. You just place this around your wrist and then you can wear the dual disc. It's very adjustable. The All right guys, here's the life point counter. It is mechanical. There's no lights or bells or buzzles to it. All you do is slide up and down for your life point count. Pretty simple. The graveyard, all you do is just slide your cards in there. For the very first dual disc, pretty all right. So, as I said before, this is the very first Asian release of the dual disc slash fight disc. Um, for a roleplay item, that was the first try. It was actually pretty neat. Like I said, I love this feature of a whole second field area instead of just putting your cards in slots. Even though next defense it does help you when you want it to go back in. Um, there is a minor flaw to it. Like, you can use your cards with sleeves. Um, I have cards that I specifically have that I don't need to use sleeves when I do want to use my roleplay dual disc. Um, it's that you can't put your cards into defense mode. That's a huge issue. I'm guessing to do that, you when you play with this, you just put your cards upside down and tell you if they were in defense mode or not. I'm not a fan. Um, and that was kind of probably the first issue that they had with this. The next, when America did it, they would probably have a much better version to do it, which is what we're going to talk about right now. But as far as the fight disc goes, this was a very good first try, and I'm very happy that I have this rare exclusive item. And now, 
for our childhood nostalgia gone wild for our next category the original battle city dual disc um this was the american release of the dual disc system and honestly as a kid i loved this thing um this version had all the bells and whistles I mean, it did that from the show, okay? They didn't do that in the manga, they did the whole transformation thing straight from the anime, which gave it that more epic vibe to it. Uh, this dual disc, uh, you can't use sleeves for it. It's a sleeve destroyer, which means you have to use original cards, and they're, you have to use cards as is, which can damage them. As I've said before, I have decks specifically that I can take out and use for roleplay if I need to, and they're actually competitive decks too. This dual disc, um, I, I got this second hand years ago. I've had this dual disc for years. Um, unlike the le previous fight disc, you can actually place cards in defense mode or in attack mode, which is great. The spell and trap card zone slots, unlike the manga and the anime, they go on top over here, which is fine because then you can like see or review where your cards are uh, in case you forget because if you're not a pro and a big fan so yeah you can like see the bottom cards are over here there is a field slot zone which is great like i said this dual disc is entirely it, it's fully functional it's a great role playing object all right here is the original battle city dual disc that we received first in america if you aren't familiar with this this is what it looks like from the front there is wear on it i've had this dual disc for years if you turn it around, it has um, a Velcro adjustable strap to it, a little battery compartment right here for your batteries if you want it to light up. You can use, see your spell and trap cards right over here. It's a pretty niche and nice design. Um, so I don't have batteries in this dual disc, but the life point counter is also mechanical just like the Fight City dual disc. So if you wanted to, you adjust your life points like this. You can't go over 9,990 though. That was a flaw that they never really corrected in future releases of the dual disc. And it's kind of lame that they never got beyond that. But yeah, this is still one of the coolest things you could ever have as a kid. I honestly didn't start using sleeves until high school, um, so 5D's era, which is fine for me. This was everything I needed it to be. I didn't really start cosplaying until what, until college anyways. So yeah, very positive review. I love this dual disc. It's not heavy on the arm. It's secure. Still rocks your cards. Just, you know, don't use super rare cards that you care about because you can't use sleeves. And now, for some more, um, let's say, ambitious ideas. This was the Ori Calico Stool Disc from the Season 4 of the video. Uh, I got this one from secondhand too. The, bat the life point counter also does light up, but it does have the same flaw as to where you can't go beyond 9,990. So you gotta do that math in your head. This Stool Disc does also have a transformation feature. It's much simpler. You don't press a button, you just flip that bad boy out, and we'll bam! instant dual disc. It's also lighter. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know how they pulled that one off, um, but it's much lighter than the original Battle City version dual disc. It does have a field spell zone, which is important if you have the Seal of Ori Calcos, because, you know, that was synonymous with the season, and everybody needs to Seal of Ori Calcos. Everyone needed to Seal of Ori Calcos. This dual disc is also not sleeve friendly. They didn't get to that point yet um, until at least a couple more seasons. Uh, monster cards would go here though. Spell cards and trap cards would also go into the slot zones right over here. Sorry, I'm doing it in a different angle. Yeah, you can still place your spell and trap card zones in the slots by you going in. Uh, you just need to be careful though, because if you slide in or try to transform the dual disc while your cards are in there, you're going to damage your cards. I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, this was a very cool design it was very artsy um, I love it especially when I was gonna do like a cool dark character OC cosplay a few years ago but I never got around to it um, yeah it's just a really cool thing to have as a collector if you love Yu-Gi-Oh and stuff like that which I do um, I know a lot of people don't like season 4 of Yu-Gi-Oh that's on you um, but it's still a dual disc and still Yu-Gi-Oh and this was really cool so yeah that was the Orichalco Stool Disc. Not a lot I can say about it. Guys, here is the Orichalco Stool Disc uh, from front to back. There's nothing really fantastic or shiny about it. Um, the wrist guard is really strong and sturdy to it. There's not as much wear as there was on my Battle City Dual Disc. Here is the battery compartment if you wanted your life points to glow up. 
pretty simple. Um, it probably has the smallest out of all the graveyard zones. Um, pretty cool design for me anyway. And now it's time to get your game on, because this dual disc was featured from my favorite series of Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, which I believe is personally the best season of Yu-Gi-Oh! Because it just was straight up card games, the characters were all likable. I could go on for days. I have all the manga, I have some of the memorabilia, but yeah, this is my favorite dual disc of all time. Can you guess why? Can you guess why? It's because it's red. So funny thing, I actually do have the original version of this dual disc on the way in the mail, but I kind of wanted to do this video because I was just so excited. Uh, yeah, this dual disc is a Japanese release. The original version was a US American release. I love this dual disc. It is probably the heaviest version out of all of them that I have. At least to me, it's the heaviest version. There is a light up feature into it. So this dual disc can use batteries. The little bulb does light up and show you the life point counter. It does have the same flaw, however, where it only goes up to 9,990 life points. There's, I, I, they didn't find a workaround about that just yet. However, it does have an amazing transformation feature, just like all the other dual discs. The decks fit fine. This isn't a sleeve friendly dual disc. They were still working on the Kings, I guess, even in Japan. Uh, the cards fit great though, however, and this is the first dual disc to have the appropriate cards go into the zone. That's right, you can put your spell and your trap cards into the bottom slot, as such, and monster cards go in fine. That was a spell card, I don't know why I grabbed that, but Swords of Healing Light, you can play Swords of Healing Light in attack mode, you can play Swords of Healing Light in defense mode. It does have a field spell zone, just like the show, fits good, so I'm gonna take my element of Hero Stratos, and I'm gonna put him in my field slot zone, as such, push them in there, good to go. You can look at the bottom, just like other dual discs, to see what your spell and trap cards are, which again, I love. This is just my favorite dual disc. Can you guess why? Can you guess why? Because it's red. Um, yeah, I don't have anything negative to say about this dual disc. It's a little heavy, but I'm kind of a strong guy, so I don't really have anything to worry about. Uh, if there were any flaws to it, it's just a life point counter. It can transform back into normal, it can decompact, it fits beautifully on my wrist, and um, that's pretty much it. Oh, the graveyard zone. Graveyard zone's fine, it can go up to 20 cards. Um, the amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! GX dual disc, probably my favorite one of all time. Um, there are no the stickers, there are no colors to them, they're just blue. Uh, I can't tell if that was original or intentional. Um, the back is pretty simple out itself. Here is the Velcro design to it. Battery compartment, uses AAA like everything else. Um, nothing really flashy or different to it. The graveyard is pretty big. The decks, you can hold up to 40 to 60 cards. It's really nice. Um, yeah, as I've said, my favorite feature about this dual disc is how anime accurate it is because you can put your spell and trap card zones in the bottom of the dual disc. Just look how nice that is. Also, if you do put lights in it, the little bulb right here does light up just like in season four of the anime, the best season of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Probably everybody's favorite one, which they didn't dub, but that's kind of on four kids, not us. So yeah, this without a doubt is my favorite out of all the dual discs. It's from my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh! series. My favorite character uses it. It's in my favorite color. I mean, I can't think of a single negative thing for me that I could have to say about this dual disc. Uh, it is probably the second most expensive dual disc out there next to the latest release Bandai Premium dual disc, which goes from about four to five hundred dollars at the moment. So if you don't have a PlayStation 5, you can always get that instead and get your game on. But yeah, that's all I have to say about this amazing version of the dual disc. And now, last but not least, without a doubt, the most accurate roleplay dual disc that was ever released Unfortunately, Japan only, I never saw an American release. The 5Ds Dual Disc. This design harkens back to the nostalgic age of the Battle City Dual Disc. However, it's to me, it feels so much lighter than it. Uh, you can play with decks with up to 60 to 80 cards with sleeves. That's right, your cards are no longer in any danger of being damaged. We still have the amazing field slot zone. It matches with the rest of the Dual Disc, comes in and out. And they fixed the error. You can now go beyond 9,990 life points with this dual disc. That's right. You can go well into the 10,000s if you wanted to, which shows your level of skill if you're able to do that. The dual, um, the graveyard, however, is a lot thinner. You can only do maybe up to 15 cards in the graveyard. I have tried. 
It also unfortunately does contain the error where you can no longer put your spell and trap card zones in the bottom layer like in the anime. Instead, you have to put them back into the top layer. It's not a make it or break it situation for me. Sorry, I'm stuck. Yeah, see? Spell and trap card zones go up here. Monster cards go up here. Oh, it's the spell cards we just swap, which is hilarious because this was actually my junk synchron. Um, there is even, for this dual disc, where is it? Okay, so there is actually, oh, there it is. So at the bottom, there is even an extra deck zone for your extra deck spell cards. I'm ne I never used it. I never had any use to use it. Instead of simply sliding in your cards, which you did with the other dual disc, they have little compartment slits over here, which lock the cards for you. So you can place your cards into attack mode, or into defense mode, and if you want to release the slits, you have little buttons right here, which immediately let the cards out. Um, this was probably the closest we would ever get until the Bandai Premium release of an accurate roleplay dual disc. Just like the previous dual discs before this one, you can use batteries to make your life point counter light up. Instead of a transformation feature though, you can take this dual disc apart for travel size, or if you you know wanted to turn your dual disc around like Kaiba and Yugi and Joey did back in season one with the dual disc system prototype. Uh, this dual disc isn't my favorite simply because it isn't red and it's not GX, but it's still probably one of the better, cooler ones because you can accurately play Yu-Gi-Oh! at least all the way up into Pendulum's get released. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds is where it ended for all officially released roleplay dual discs, um, either in the US or in Japan. Um, I had originally pre-ordered the Bandai Premium version that I had mentioned before, but I had foolishly canceled my pre-order and I never gotten back to getting it. I'm going to get it eventually, just not today. Um, there are some really great custom cosplay dual discs that I've seen out there. Uh, I wish I could like link or source them or tell you where to get them. I don't know. Um, but if there were more dual discs out there, I would collect them. I love dual discs to death. And there you have it, guys. That is my entire dual disc collection as of now. If I ever do get the Bandai Premium dual disc, um, that will give me an excuse to also show off the original Silver Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Dual Disc, which was also released in America. This was actually my very first toy review video of any kind. I typically leave those to the pros that I know personally out there because they just do such fantastic jobs. But I'm so proud of all of these. I wanted to show them off. Um, you guys know I do love Yu-Gi-Oh! I did show that in the Yu-Gi-Oh! R video. Um, did you guys want me to go on with that? Did you want me to do other chapters? Because I, I, I don't know if people liked it or not. If you guys want me to do more, you know, say something in the comments. If not, I'm not going to do any more voiceovers for Yu-Gi-Oh! chapters. But, yeah, this was it. This was a very proud moment for me as a fan of Yu-Gi-Oh! I love Yu-Gi-Oh! I love Pokemon. I love Digimon. I really love Digimon. Um, there is that Power Ranger thing that I do every once in a while. I do do Star Wars stuff, too. But, um... I'm very glad and grateful to have acquired these very rare collection items over the past couple of years. So, thank you guys for watching uh, me show off and share my awesome Dualdisc collection. Do you have a collection that you're super proud of and passionate about? Let me know in the comments below. And please remember to like, share, and subscribe for more content. I am going to try to turn out a new video at least once a month, you guys. It may be Power Ranger related, Yu-Gi-Oh related, Digimon related, Pokemon related, Teletubby related, Manga related. Uh, something. I'm never going to do streams. I forbid myself on ever doing streams, but I will have more content out there. But this is just a hobby for me. I do this either because I'm feeling passionate or because it just feels like something that would go good on the channel. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you have a super mega day and remember to stay classy and get your game on. Uh, this is usually the part where I have like a funny in credit stinger, but um, I, I don't really have anyone I can credit for this besides myself and, you know, maybe links to the dual disc, so, yeah. Have you gotten a PS5 yet?